MapMate has its own system for exchanging data between copies of MapMate using the replicator and the synchronization facility. However, if you want to get data into MapMate that has come from a different program or just from a spreadsheet, then you need to import it into MapMate. And in order to do that, you first have to have it saved as a text file in the correct format. In most cases, the starting point will be to get the data into a spreadsheet where you can edit it and get it into the correct sequence that MapMate will accept. In order for MapMate to be able to import it, it does need to be in exactly the order that's shown here. The columns and details of the data that goes into each column is documented in various places and there are links to these on the BSBI MapMate support website. So this spreadsheet has been set up and is ready to import into MapMate, but let's just have a quick look at the various columns and um, what they need to contain. The first column is for the taxon, which has to give the scientific name for the species that you're dealing with. MapMate can't import from English names alone, it does need the scientific name, and the scientific name has to match exactly with the names that are stored in the MapMate species dictionary. However, as we shall see later, if you do try to import a name that doesn't quite match, perhaps there's just a spelling mistake or something, then MapMate will tell you and give you a chance to correct it. Next we get to the site column, and the site names can be any name that you wish to give them. It's worth spending a bit of time thinking about your site names before importing them into MapMate, because it is generally much easier to edit them in the spreadsheet than it is to try and edit them after they've been imported. So if you do have any particular naming conventions that you wish to use for sites, it's a good idea to get these consistent in the spreadsheet before you do the import. The next column is the GridRef column, and this accepts standard grid references at various levels of precision, four figure, six figure. I believe it will quite happily deal with 10 figure grid references as well. The Vice County column, Ideally, you should give the number for the Vice County from which the records come. However, if you're not quite sure what the Vice County is, you can set this to zero and MapMate will calculate the Vice County when it imports the records. Usually it gets this right unless the grid reference happens to be very close to a boundary. The next two columns are for the recorder and determiner. And once again, it's worth making sure that you've got these names consistent, and if you wish, you can make them match names that are already in your MapMate database, but it's best to do that in the spreadsheet first. The next column for date is actually the one that gives the most difficulty in setting up spreadsheets for importing into MapMate. The date has to be in a particular format that MapMate recognises, which is to, to have it numerically with two digits for the day, two for the month, and four for the year. Depending on what sort of spreadsheet software you're using, some spreadsheets, and Excel is one example of this, are very keen on reformatting dates, and they sometimes do this without you noticing, so you, it is something you need to keep an eye on. One way of dealing with this is to try and set the correct date format in the first place. You can do this, for instance, by highlighting the column, right-clicking, and choosing Format Cells. And depending on which version of Excel or other spreadsheet software you're using, you should find that there is an option to set the date format to the one that you want. So this one is showing it has 2 plus 2 plus 4 for the year. In this particular example, the dates are all single days, but MapMate will accept months or years or date ranges, and the details for those different formats are all in the um, documents that you can download. The next column is for the quantity for each record, and this can be set as zero if the quantity is unknown, and MapMate will translate that as just being present but not counted. You can add a method into the method column, such as field record or um, whichever method you've used, but if no method has been recorded in the data you're dealing with, then you can just set that to unknown. The sex column uses abbreviations for male or female or unrecorded. And for the stage column, you need to be using the terms that MapMate recognises. The example we're looking at here is actually for moth records, so we have adults and a larval stage and one dead one, but there are equivalents for plant records as well, or you can have that as not recorded. Likewise, for the status column, it can just be not recorded, or you can pick up on the MapMate terms. And finally, the last column is for any comment that goes along with the record. 
depending on where your data has come from, if there are any additional columns that MapMate doesn't recognise, you may wish to put those additional facts into the comment column and import them into MapMate that way. But that's another task to be done in the spreadsheet before you try and import it. Final thing to say about the spreadsheet is that you must make very sure that there is no information in the columns after the comment column. Um, if there is anything in those columns, it can cause the import process to go wrong. So one way of checking that is to go to the column after comment, highlight it, and indeed the next two or three as well if you wish, and having highlighted them, right-click and delete just to make sure they are completely empty. So having got our spreadsheet in the format that we need, um, the first thing to do is to save it as a spreadsheet, just in case we need to go back and change anything. But in order to import it into MapMate, we also need to save it as a tab-separated text file. So if we do Save As, and where you see Save As Type, you should find in the list something that looks like tab delimited text, and you can just save the spreadsheet in that format. In Excel, when you try to save a spreadsheet as a tab-separated text file, it always comes up with this message pointing out that text files are not as clever as Excel files, and are you really sure you want to keep it in the text file format? And yes, we do, so we say yes at this point. And you also, having saved it as a text file, need to close it down before you can import it into MapMate. When you go to close it, Excel will ask you if you want to save the changes that you've made to the text file. Well, in fact, we haven't made any changes, so we can just say no at this point. So our text file is now ready to import into MapMate. So if we go back to MapMate. To do the import, we need to go to File, Import, Data from Tab Text Files. And we get taken to a wizard that um, will take us through the import process and check the data as we do that. The first thing to do is to tell MapMate where the file is that we wish to import. And that's not very obvious, but it's this button on the right-hand side. We click on there. We can then navigate our way through to where our data has been saved and open the file that we wish to import. So having told MapMate where the file is, we can test the file. This just checks that the file is in the correct format and that all the data fits in the columns that it should do. If there are any problems, then the View Errors button will be highlighted and you can check to see what the problems were. But in this case, our file is OK. So the next thing is to ask MapMate to read the file. And it's telling us that the file has been captured with no problems. At this point, it's possible to browse the data that you're trying to import. And this just opens up a typical MapMate browse list. There's not really anything much you can do with this list. You can't edit it at this stage, but it just provides reassurance that you have picked up the set of data that you were expecting and that it does look in the correct format. We can now move on to carry out the various checks that MapMate allows on the content of the data before doing the import. With the Taxa button ticked, we can click on Check and MapMate checks to see whether the species names that you're trying to import match what is in the database species dictionary. And in this case they do, so that's fine. We can now click on Recorders and check. Now in this case it's come up with a list of recorder names which are not currently in our copy of MapMate. And usually that's absolutely fine because when you go on to do the import, these recorder names will be created as new recorders in your database, which is probably what you want. What this list does do, however, is give you a chance to check whether, in fact, any of those names should be in your database but are just spelled slightly differently or have a middle initial, whereas they don't in another place. In other words, you can just check to see whether there's any consistency that you would wish to enforce before doing the import. If you do wish to change any of these, you'll have to go back to the spreadsheet and change it there, re-export as a text file, as we shall see in a moment. Likewise with the methods. In this case, there's one new method that has been used in the spreadsheet data, and we have the choice of either going back and changing that in the spreadsheet or accepting it to come into MapMate, in which case it will be created as a new method in your copy of MapMate. Similarly with the sites, when you're importing a new set of data, you would probably expect to have new site names coming in as well, but as usual, MapMate just gives you the chance to review those before doing the import. The next three, Sex, Stage and Status, 
like the species names, they are ones that you can't add to. So if we check the sex terms, hopefully they will all be there, because if they're not, it will cause the import to fail. Likewise, the stage, you can't import a stage term that's not already in the database, and you can't import a status term that's not already in the database. But in this case, we have no problems with that. So we can move on to section three to actually do the import. There's a tick box here to reject any records that have errors in them, and I would advise that you always leave that ticked. If you untick it, you will end up with records being imported to MapMate that don't necessarily have all the bits of information that they should, and you might end up with missing site names or recorder names, so I can't see any reason to untick that box. Having done all that, we're ready to import the data. Click on Import Now, OK to confirm and it takes MapMate a few moments to um, check the data and start to bring it in. Depending on the size of the data set you're trying to import, of course, this will take longer or shorter. When it's got through the import, you'll see the Import Complete message, and you can then click on Done. At this point, you'll get a message that at first glance is quite confusing. You have three choices here. If you say yes at this point, the data that you've just been trying to import will get copied into your MapMate database as fully confirmed records. If you say no, the data won't be kept at all and you'll be back to square one, ready to import all over again. But the third option, which is rather misleadingly called cancel, will allow you to import the data into MapMate as a temporary layer in the database. You'll be able to run queries on it and it will show up on your maps but the data will not be fully saved, which gives you a chance to look at it and make sure that you're happy with it before you make the decision to do the save. So in most cases, you're very unlikely to want to click no at this point, because the whole point of what you've been doing is to import the data, but you have a choice between saying yes to import it permanently straight away, or cancel to import it temporarily and save it later. Just to see how it works, we'll take the cancel option at this point and you're then back at the main MapMate screen, and nothing seems to have happened particularly, you now probably want to have a look at the records and make sure they have come in OK. There's various ways of doing that, but one is to go to the Data Entry screen and down to the Reference field. When MapMate imports data from a tab text file, it automatically creates a reference to go along with that particular import, and the author for the reference will be given as center followed by your CUK. And in fact, if you just type in center and press enter, you'll get a list of all the references that have been created with the word center at the beginning of them. The particular copy of MapMate that I'm using for this video has a CUK that is BNT, and we can see that it's the top reference on this list. And if I OK that, it's telling me that this is the data import on the 3rd of February 2012, the day I've done this. And having put that into the reference field, we can now run one of the queries from here to um, look at all the related records and see everything that's been imported from that particular tab text file. Now remember, at this stage, this data has only been imported temporarily because we went for the cancel option at that point. Um, but it's all here. You can look at any particular record and see exactly what it is and make sure that you're happy with it. If you are happy with that data and decide that you want to keep it permanently, um, it's not at all obvious how you do that, but in fact the way you do it is to go back to File and Import and pretend that you're going to import another tab text file. And when you try and do that, you'll get a message coming up saying that you already have some imported data that has not yet been saved. In other words, this is the data that we just imported temporarily. If we OK this, we get taken back to the three choice box that we were given earlier on, where again, we could just click cancel and keep it temporarily. But of course, having done that already, what we want to do this time is to click on yes, at which point the data we imported has now been permanently saved within our database. And we could go on to do another import at this stage, or we can just cancel to come out of here. So, having done all that, we now have a tab-separated text file that has been imported fully into MapMate. There's one final job that I nearly always do when I do a tab text import, and that is to go back to the reference that MapMate has created and change it into something more meaningful. So we go back into the data entry screen, and just as we did before, type in the word center, press the enter button, 
find the reference that was created for that particular import. This time what we want to do is click on the reference label and go to view this entry. And here you can see the details that MapMate has put in when it automatically created this reference for the data you've been importing. What MapMate puts in here is actually quite helpful. It gives you the date of the import and it also gives you the name and location of the file that you actually imported. So that's all good stuff. But what usually does need changing is the author because probably the data that you've imported will be from a particular place or perhaps from a particular project and it's usually much better to give that as the author rather than just the centre that imported the data. So we go to records and edit. The details that you need to put in here will vary of course depending on the data set that you're dealing with but probably you'll want to give it a different author and a title that will tell you a little bit more about where the data has come from. Having done that you can save the reference and OK it. It doesn't change straight away when you go back to the data entry window but in fact it has changed and you'll find that that centre BNT data import no longer exists but the one that you changed it to is now there and just to make sure that it's been correctly attached to all the records we can do show all related records and there again are all the records that we imported but if we have a look at one of them it's now showing us that reference that we edited from the, the data import. So we've been through the process of importing a tab separated to text file and the example that we used had no problems in it so we've managed to import it all in one go. In the subsequent video I'll show you what happens if you do hit any problems during the data import and how to carry out edits on there. Um, but we'll leave that one here. I think it's true to say that in most cases the most difficult part of doing a data import into MapMate is getting the spreadsheet file into the correct format to start with and making sure that you're happy with all your site names and people names and so on. And it's worth spending the time getting that spreadsheet as accurate and consistent as you can make it before you bring it into MapMate. But once you have got the spreadsheet in the correct format, the data import process is reasonably straightforward. It takes a bit of time, but it all works through in a logical way, and it's a very quick way of getting very large data sets sometimes into MapMate.